G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I've got a quick tutorial in Python. I thought I would share an interesting keyword that I came across quite recently when I was trying to solve a problem where I had a list of data and I wanted to break that data every time a consistent value appeared. In this case, in a list of ones, I wanted to break it every time I saw a zero. Um, so to do this, I actually used a keyword I came across called yield. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can use the yield statement to solve this problem using Python in Dynamo, but obviously you could use this in lots of other languages as well. Um, today I'll be using Revit 2020 and Dynamo 2.3, but this would work in most programs that support basic Python as a language. Anyway, let's get started. So in the case that I was using this data for originally, I had a long list of zeros and ones. In this case, a zero being a false outcome and a one being a true outcome. This was basically related to when particular places in a room received sunlight across the times of day. So in this case, we were working with a time step of four, so every 15 minutes we were checking this. And the challenge was that we had to only count periods of sunlight where we had at least one continuous hour, so four samples in a row. So what we're gonna do in this case is just create 900 elements and we're gonna make them randomly. So I'm gonna build a random list. I'm gonna make 900 random numbers and I'm gonna round them as well because the round the, the random node typically returns some, something in the range of zero to one. So we're just gonna round it up or down, whichever one is closest. And now we're just gonna have a random list of ones and zeros. I'm then gonna chop this, chop this list up into sublists in this case. So I'm gonna take this list of random numbers and every 90 values, I'm gonna chop it. So in this case, I should end up with 10 lists. So it should be 10 lists of 90 numbers. And there we go, we have 10 lists. So index nine is the last list. And from this, we're gonna split this list every time we get to a zero. And we're gonna exclude the zeros as well. And we're gonna be using the Python yield statement in this case to great effect. So in this case, I'm gonna make a Python script and I'm gonna make two inputs. The first input is gonna be our list of lists and the second input is gonna be what we're splitting the values at. In this case, we're gonna split the values when we hit a zero. So this is our second input and our first input is gonna be our data. So I'm gonna edit my Python script and I'm just gonna delete everything in this case. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna define a function that turns my elements into a list if they're not in the form of a list. So I'm just gonna call this function toList and this is a really common thing that I do. Um, and there's gonna be an input that we refer to within the function. And I'm gonna say that the result I'm dealing with is going to be just the input if it's already a list. So I'm gonna check if it is an instance and I'm gonna say an instance of input type list in this case. This is a really common and very useful function. Now I'm gonna do input, sorry, if is instance. So I'm, I'm basically reveal, uh, re reconstructing an if statement in the reverse order in this case. Um, if you're not quite sure how to do this, definitely check out my Python quick tip series. Um, I'm sort of creating this under the assumption you sort of understand the basics of Python. If it's not a list, I'm just gonna say that it, it is actually the input inside a list. And then I'm just gonna return, in this case, the result. So in this case, I'm just returning a result directly. So it's not quite how the yield statement is going to work. We're gonna use the yield statement as well though which is quite different. So what we're gonna do in order to do this is, well, first of all, we're gonna go and collect our input. So I'm just gonna call my input values. And I'm gonna say that, I'm gonna apply the to list function across them at input zero. So this just makes sure that my input is in the form of a list. So in this case, um, it will turn, it will keep this as a list because it already is. But if I was feeding in just say one set of data, then the input wouldn't be a list in that case. I'm also gonna create something to write my result to, just an empty list. But really mostly what I'm gonna be doing here is applying a function to each of these elements. So I'm actually gonna go back and write a new function. Um, in this case, we're gonna create what's called a lazy iterator. So in this case, the yield statement is essentially what they call a lazy function because essentially it keeps going, then it does something, and then it keeps going after that. So we're gonna define a function. I'm gonna call it splitter because it's gonna split my data every time it hits a zero. I'm gonna have two inputs. One of them I'm gonna call seq, which is sequence. And I'm also gonna say that the split value that we're dealing with um, is by default just going to be equal to zero. So if there's no input specified in this function, it's gonna be implied that value is zero. After this, um, I'm gonna essentially be defining my function. 
So I'm going to add just one value of the split value to the end of the total element that we work across. In this case, we're going to apply this function to each sub list. So I'm just going to add one instance so that at the very end of the function, it finds a termination condition because if it doesn't actually find a split value at the end, it's never going to return that last element in the list. So I'm just going to say to each sequence, which is the variable that we've inputted to this function, I'm just going to append one instance of the split value. And you'll sort of understand why I'm doing this quite shortly. I'm now going to create a variable within my function, just called group. And this is what we're going to be essentially returning um, to the output of the function. I'm then going to be taking for each item in the sequence, so I'm working across each item in the list one by one, um, remembering this is going to be our sub list. So in this case, I'm going to be checking something. So I'm going to tab insert. I'm going to say, in this case, um, if the number is not equal to the split value. So if we're not dealing with a zero in this case, I'm going to append this number to that, that group that I made. So in this case, I'm just going to append it to, I'm going to append number to group. So if that item isn't a zero, I'm going to include it in the group variable. At the moment, we haven't returned this group variable. So in this case, I'm also just going to say otherwise for that variable, for group, I'm going to yield that group. So now we're using the yield statement. Now, what is this going to do? Well, in this case, this is actually going to go and append the current state of group to the output of my function. So the yield statement essentially allows you to just throw things at the end of a function without ever having to return anything. The return is implied as what you're yielding the element to. So it's a really handy little function when you want something to just keep going and going and going. You're not trying to build up a list to return at the end. It's just a great way to lazily build up an outcome. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to say after that, the group resets. So essentially, we've built our group full of ones. Once we hit a zero, the group is reset, but we add what was in the group at the time to the output of, this, of the function. So once we've done this, I might just save this function. And now we're going to actually run across our list of lists, and we're going to apply that splitter function to each sublist. So we're going to use that yield statement across each one. I'm going to say for each element in values, remembering that values is our list, I'm going to take result, and I'm going to append the outcome of, in this case, turning that result into a list. So I'm going to run the list function across the output of essentially running the splitter function across each sublist. And just close off my brackets. I think I've got the right number, three and three. And then we just say that out is the result. So let's have a look at what we've got. Hopefully this should run. I've got an undefined variable. I think I've used the wrong, the wrong syntax somewhere. Just check uh, line 10 and line 20 if number equals split value. So in this case, for num, ah, uh, for num, so I need to make that num instead of nu, and that should work. So have a look at what we've got now. So essentially the yield statement has allowed us to construct lists within each sublist of the ones without the zeros, and every time we've hit a zero, it's broken those lists into sublists. So we now know the duration of each, essentially a period of ones in each sublist. So this is essentially representing the number of 15 minute intervals in a row within sublists. So this is essentially the key to unlocking um, measuring a continuous period of a certain value, in this case, ones or sunlight. So from here, essentially I'm just working with the, the list output. So there's a few things we can do here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count the number of items at level three of that list, which in this case is the number of sublists. Now I can see for each sublist how many elements are in there, so how many lists are inside our sublists. So I can see how many sampling periods I'm dealing with. And I'm also just going to count everything at level two. Now the reason I've counted at level three is because when I count each sublist right at the bottom, you can see it's not in the structure of the actual lists themselves, so I can't really process this data. Now at the moment, this represents the number of 15 minute intervals. I want to know how many hours we are continuous for across each period. So I'm going to divide this by four. I'm going to say x divided by four. And I'm also going to apply a floor to this. So I'm going to force it to round down. So in this case, in this case, we know that say the first period is only 
going to be uh, three samples. So in this case, we know it's not a full hour, so we're gonna round it down. So that 0.75 becomes zero, uh, the 0.25 becomes zero, the 1.5, say, becomes one. So we're only counting a whole period of sum. So that's how we can do that. I'm then gonna chop that output by these lengths so that I can reconstruct my output like this. So now I can see everything is back in the format of those sublists. And all I really have to do now is just sum that outcome. So I'm gonna apply, apply the sum. And now each of those lists will just be tallied into the total number of hours across all of those samples. So now we can see we have uh, 10 outputs one for each sublist that we began with originally. And now we know how many continuous hours of sun we receive during the day that last for at least one continuous hour. Now you could apply this to different intervals. For example, some cities actually test whether you have 15 minutes of continuous sun. So you may need to do say every minute. Um, and this logic can be reconstructed in other programs like Grasshopper in order to process continuous intervals across a sample of elements. So hopefully that was an interesting example of a keyword in Python that you might not have been familiar with and you may find other uses for the yield statement or a lazy iterator in future functions that you write. I myself have found a couple of scenarios where this helped me write some more direct and straightforward statements and I think that's what this function is probably best used for. I know there are some better ways of doing this, some more computationally or um, programmatically efficient ways of writing these sort of statements than using yield, um, but I found this is a really quick and easy way when you're not so worried about the optimization of your code. Anyway, if you're not already following and subscribing to the channel, uh, feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos like this one. Thanks, take care, bye.